Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? <laughs> that was to this evening, today into this evening because it is not even I'm trying to move you guys closer. <laughs> I'm in such a good mood today, can you tell? Um, it is not even five o'clock yet and my husband is already home. He had a early day today and then he went and got a one of those like hydration, you know those IV infusion things that he gets because he had been sick this weekend and so he wanted to get one of those infusion things. So he got one of those infusion things and then he just got home and I am currently uploading a uh, video that I did for my drama channel, the video that I talked about on here the other day and then um, I think I'm going to call it something like breaking point or something and then my neighbor's sitting across the street and she's sitting on her little bench reading on her phone over there. Are you reading on your phone? Oh, I thought you were reading on your phone. How many steps did you walk? Oh, that's good. It's beautiful, isn't it? It is so nice today. It is like 73 or 74 degrees outside. It is so beautiful out tonight. And um, so yeah, so I am like in such a good mood. She's out, her husband's out. They were grilling last night. He made Cornish tins. And um, I asked him, I said, are you grilling out tonight? And he said, no, I'm not grilling out tonight. But anyway, all the neighbors have been walking around and walking by and um, a bunch of people that I've never seen before, but real friendly. They've been really friendly today. And Boo Radley's been running around out in the yard. He's like loving it. He's like sniffing the air, constantly sniffing. <laughs> he loves to run around when it's nice outside. Oh, she's looking over here. Oh, somebody's walking by because my neighbor just said, I haven't seen you on the walking trail in a long time. Um, so yeah, so, uh, oh, they walk every day. What's he talking about? Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Um, it's that family that I always talk about. The family is five, but there's four today, but they, they always walk by here. I don't know what he's talking about. Because he's never outside. I'm always outside in the cold, right? Um, oh no, he's talking to this couple. She always wears a dress when she walks. She has pants on today. I think this is the first time I've ever seen her in pants in my entire life. How are you? Hey. Um, yeah, she usually always wears like this long dress. They're so sweet. He's the one that Caroline asked because he walks like three times in front of my house. And we were, where were we when, we weren't at the pool. He wasn't, I can't remember. But anyway, she asked him, she said something about how much do you walk or whatever. And he said something like five miles and he walks like has all these different, I get it now why he like walks by and stuff because I'll do that. Like. I'll go like up a cul-de-sac and come down and then walk up the cul-de-sac again just to get, you know, like some time in on my steps and stuff like that when I'm walking. But yeah, it's so beautiful. And um, speaking of walks, I'm going to take one tonight. I took one last night. I've taken a walk the last two nights and um, very proud of myself. Last night I took a walk and I, I walked for, I think, 45 minutes. I walk until my knee starts hurting and then I'm like, okay, it's time to come home. And... Um, I try not to get too far away. I was walking kind of like far away before, but I don't want to get too far away and then have my knee hurt. Last night I walked and I listened to, like the first 20 or 30 minutes I listened, no, maybe it wasn't that long, maybe it was like the first 10 or 15 minutes, I listened to music. And then I listened to uh, the, I keep wanting to call it The Handmaids, because Caroline and I were talking about The Handmaid's Tale the other day. The the, the housemate, the housemaid secret. I'm listening to the second one. It's getting good. I was telling my friend Nikki last night, it makes me very nervous. Like I asked Tanya this, I was like, did it make you nervous to, to read? And she was like, no. It's like she is constantly always thinking that somebody's watching her, or that she's gonna get caught in something. It makes me very nervous to listen to. <laughs> I like thrillers, but I don't necessarily like thrillers like that, where she's constantly looking over her shoulder, she thinks somebody's following her and stuff. It makes me kind of nervous to listen to. So anyway, I walked and I listened to that last night and then I came home and it was so nice last night that I sat out here and um, I like clean well earlier I had like cleaned off the table cleaned off everything out here I didn't get the cobwebs yet but lit some candles I brought this new candle out here here we'll light it right now this is the I try to save these smaller candles that I bought on Amazon these are actually the ones that I don't love the smell of but it's okay um, the King's Candle Collection Bonfire it's not bad, it's very cologne smelling. There's like this like little thing I can't get off my shirt. But anyway, 
It's like one of those like woodwork. See? Things. Now the wind just came right as I was trying to light this. So it crackles a little bit. But um I did that last night and then cleaned this all off and whatever. And then I just got some coffee. It's freshed up well. It's my first big coffee of the day. She keeps on looking over here. What's she want? She wanna ask me something, but she's trying to figure out if I'm recording or not. And she's looking at her phone and stuff like that. We were talking about Survivor, who our favorites are and stuff already. Because we're both watching Survivor. Survivor started last week. It's actually pretty good. Um, did I say this already? Probably on a previous vlog I did. I'm kind of surprised that I haven't watched it all these years. <laughs> because, like, I started watching it. And I was like, I don't know if I can do this again. Like, I just watched Survivor or whatever. And, like, 10 minutes in, I was totally hooked. I was like, I am so into Survivor again. And I can't wait till the Amazing Race starts. It starts, like, next week or something. So, yeah. So, I took this walk last night. And then I came home. And that was when I was talking to Nikki and Tanya. And then I, and I, I cleaned off my table and stuff before I took my walk. And so I lit the candle. And then after I got done talking to them, I listened to a little bit of The Housemaid's Secret. And then um, I feel like like this moment of clarity that I had this weekend, I feel like it wakened, like awakened Peter at like 22 when I got sober again or something. I don't know. Like I just... I have like the last two days since that night felt like very spiritual, very focused. And last night, you know, I listened to audiobooks constantly, right? But when I first got sober, and even like before I got sober, I would do this in my first apartment. I would, um, like I can remember like in the nice weather, I would like go on, I had, like this little patio that looked out over the woods and I would read out there. And I can re remember before I got sober, I read like, a lot of Hemingway and Fitzgerald. I was real into all those, like, you know, expatriate writers and things like that. My mom, like, loved those and stuff. So I, I read a lot of those, but I used to read a lot. And when I got sober and then w when I went, like, back to school and stuff, I was l reading a lot of Southern literature. And I, I love Southern literature. And, like, Eudora Welty and Carson McCullers and things like that. And so last night... I had bought, I can't remember what show I was watching. I was watching some show. It's like some scary show. It might have been Cruel Summer. It's like one of those kind of shows. But the girl in it was reading Wise Blood by Flannery O'Connor. And I have never read that. And I don't know that I've ever read. Oh, you know what? There's some other books that I want to read. I need to get back online tonight and buy some more. So anyway, let me explain this. So I, um, well, okay. Take it back a second. So, I love just to sit outside, nice weather, have candle lit. You know, when I drank, I would drink. After I got sober, I'd make a pot of coffee, and I would just read for hours, you know? And, hey, how are you? Good. How are you? Good. Hey, Tiger. Oh, she looked up. Oh, hi, honey. Um, and I don't know why, but last night, like, I kind of missed it. And I've been, like, reading, like, a story here and a story there of this Raymond Carver, um... Uh, short stories because I love his short stories. I think I read Cathedral like years ago and that was the name of the short story collection And so I had bought a couple years ago. I don't know when the short story collection of his That's called What we talk about when we talk about love I think that's what it's called and so a couple like a week ago I started like I would read a short they're real short short stories are like three or four pages and so They're very bizarre. They're just like about regular people and um I mean, he's like, you know, I mean, he's since passed. I think he died like in 83 or something like that or 88. He, um, I love his short stories. I don't know what it is. It reminds me a lot of Slouching Towards Bethlehem by Joan Didion. And so last night I was like, I remember this period of my life, like after I got sober and I would say it was like two, around two years sober when I would come home and my boyfriend at the time he worked like two different jobs and the second job that he had was that he did like room service at this hotel and so he would come home like at two or three o'clock in the morning and so 
I would come home from work, you know, or go to a meeting, and then, like, I would work out, and then I would, like, take a shower, put on my pajamas and stuff, and then I can remember I would, like, make a pot of coffee, and I would just, like, read for hours. And I loved it, you know? And, ba and the back then, I would, like, you know, also I would read a lot of the thrillers. I read a lot of, like, the James Patterson. That's kind of when I got into all that. But I can remember this period of my life, and I was reading, like, a lot of Southern literature and, like, short stories and stuff. And, um... I can remember I was like going back and I was reading like a lot of the 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 ex you know Pat kind of writing of like Hemingway and Fitzgerald and stuff like that and I was thinking about that last night and so anyway I sat out here last night and I read quite a bit of that Carver book and listened to some of my audiobook I just was like oh my god I forgot how much how much I just like miss like sitting and just like reading you know we're listening to a book or whatever but I read quite a bit of this Raven Carver book last night, these short stories, and it was just so beautiful out the side and it had the candles lit and I was drinking coffee and stuff. And so last night, well, I, I took a nap because Alex went to bed early and I took a nap. And um, when I, oh, no, no, no. So I, I didn't take a nap last night. No, that was the night before. I didn't take a nap last night. Last night, I, um, he went to bed early. When I got back from my walk, I actually walked late. And then when I got back, that's why I talked on the phone and then I read a little bit and whatever. And then I took like a shower and like did my face deal and put on clean pajamas and stuff. It was so nice. Came out here and read a little bit more and then I went inside and I finished Traders. Not tra Traders, not Traders. <laughs> it should be called that. I finished The Tourist. Um, I liked it. The second season of The Tourist, I liked better than the first season of The Tourist. I thought it was better. And it hasn't been renewed for a third season, but it's kind of like left ambiguously like you don't know. like if it's gonna like it left it open-ended that it could be there could be a third season so um but i really really like it um and so i watched that and then i was like i think i want to order some of these books like some of them i still have like in my basement but a lot of them i don't and so i was like looking up um i got online and i looked up like lists of like the best like southern gothic fiction which i don't know why i didn't think of like uh now i can't think of her name Shirley, uh, the one that wrote the lottery, Shirley Jackson. Shirley Jackson and um, Flannery O'Connor and some of those people because I bought Wise Blood. But anyway, so I went in and I looked up, like, because I wanted, like, books to, to read out here at night and then books to, like, also take to the pool this summer. And so, um, cause I definitely love to listen to audiobooks more, but I was like, okay, you know, when I get back into this, like making a pot of coffee at night, sitting outside and reading, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And so I got online on Amazon and they were actually having like a prime day sale last night or something. I don't know. Cause it was like every paperback that I looked up was like half price, but just for like one day or it said like one day sale or something like that underneath it or I don't know, prime day sale or something. I was like every book that I looked up, well, there was two that I bought the hardbacks that had just come out. And that one was, so anyway, I bought a bunch of like Southern Gothic fiction. I bought, I also went in and bought The Sun Also Rises um, by Hemingway and The Garden of Eden, which was Hemingway's last book. And I don't know why, but I remember when I read that book, that book like profoundly changed me, like, and made me look at the world in a completely different way. It's about this husband and wife, this man and this woman, they, I was like, please tell me that's not like a lawnmower right next door. Um, the sounds of summer. Anyway, um, and I don't remember anything about it, but I remember like they go, it's a lot about gender, and they go to like the south of France or something. They run this house in a small town or Italy or somewhere, I don't know. And like, I remember reading it in the summer. <coughs> I may have read this book when I was still drinking, which is probably why I don't remember lots of it. Um, it's so strange. I can remember reading a lot of that, and I would drink, and I wasn't like a big rum drinker, but like that, like that summer when I was reading a lot of that, I was, I would read like, I would drink like rum and cokes, and I also drank a lot of like ouzo and sambuca because they would talk about like that kind of stuff like in those books, and so like from Greece, you know. And so, um, it's about this woman and she like wants to get as tan as she can, get her hair as blonde as she can, and she goes through like this transformation and it was like his last book it was uncompleted apparently. But anyway, I bought that and then I bought The Sun Also Rises. I know I have a copy somewhere in the basement, but I was like, I want a new copy of it. And so 
and I bought a bunch of these other books. And then I was like thinking about like writers that like really I loved reading back in the day. Like I can remember like I read one book of theirs and I couldn't put it down. And one of them was Russell Banks. And Russell Banks wrote this book called Rule of the Bone. And I remember reading it like I got I don't know 25 years ago or something like that. And it, the book I wrote, the Rule of the Bone, is about this kid, and he's like a juvenile delinquent and. He, like, goes on the run with a couple of his friends, and they end up, like, robbing these houses and stuff like that, and, um, he ends up, like, in Jamaica trying to find, like, his biological father or something like that, and it's, like, it's, this book is, like, fantastically written, but, like, very bizarre as well, and I love Russell Banks. Russell Banks wrote The Sweet, Sweet Hereafter, Cloud Spitter, like, every book that he writes is completely different. It's, like, Stuart O'Nan is one of my favorite authors. Stuart O'Nan is like that, too. Like, every book that he writes is completely different. Like, Speed Queen is about this woman who falls in love with this meth dealer, and they go on the run, and then she ends up on death row, and she sells the rights to her story to Stephen King, and that's how it's the book. The, then there's this book called The Night Country, and it's about these four kids in high school that are in a car accident, and two of them survive, and it's every chapter of the book is told, or is the title of a horror movie, and then The Good Wife, and then The Snow Queen, and there's so many of them. And so I went and looked. Stuart O'Neill, I had on Audible recently bought like his newest book. I just haven't listened to it yet. So I didn't buy any of his. But then I went and I looked at Jill McCorkle. Jill McCorkle was one of my favorite authors when I was like my first year of college. I can remember like I was in this creative writing class and we had to write a letter to like an author that we loved. And, like, the whole class wrote, you know, whatever, to so Stephen King or this person or that person. And I wrote to Jill McCorkle. And she was a professor at Holland's College. I think it's in Virginia. Her most famous book that, like, was ever, like, on the, any kind of bestseller list was called Tending to Virginia. It's actually the one book of hers that I haven't read. I've read most of her other books. She has collections of short stories and stuff like that. But anyway... Because I had read this book called Fair Speech. Now, I reread it. I think it was last summer that I listened to it on Audible or I reread it. And I can tell you it didn't have the same impact on me that it had years ago. Because I think I read it. Like, you know when you read certain books at certain times and they have certain impacts on you? Um, it had an impact on me at the time that I read it. And then I went in and I read. She had a book called, I think it was called Queen, uh, The Cheerleader. Queen of I the, the books I still have in the basement. They're beautiful books. They're like little, like square books. The Cheerleader, I think Queen of October and July Fourth, and I loved them. I mean, I could I should read them again because I don't remember them at all. And um, I have to bring those up and read those this summer. So anyway, I also I've always in my since I was in third grade wanted to read the entire series of The Witch's Sister, and I only ever got to like there was Witch's Sister, Witch's Water, and The Witch Herself, and I don't even think I ever read The Witch Herself. And then a couple years ago, I got online because somebody said, "Did you not know?" It's by Phyllis Reynolds Naylor. They're like kids' books, and it's about this girl and her sister Jo Beth is I think her name's Jo Beth. I can't remember, but anyway, her sister becomes a witch. And so she's the witch's sister. And her and her friend, whose name is Mouse, like, they go trying to figure out. And her sister is like a witch underneath this old lady whose name is Mrs. Tuggle. I don't know how I remember any of this. But anyway. So she was like, um... Somebody actually reached out to me the other night, a YouTuber, and was asking me about... I thought it was an interesting question because nobody's ever asked me this before. But they said something about, like... Apparently, somebody out there is claiming, like, I, I guess some, some, uh, some creator, I don't know anything about this person, I never heard of their name, but that they plagiarized information or something due to their epilepsy, which caused them to have memory loss, and they were, so they were saying something about, like, do you have memory loss due to epilepsy? I was like, my, not, I've never had one doctor say to me that epilepsy causes memory loss. I've never had one doctor say that to me. In fact, people always say to me, like, you have, like, a memory of steel. Like, it's crazy what you remember. People always say that to me. Like, Caroline doesn't even remember anything before she was, like, 14, and she never had anything traumatic happen to her. It was nothing like that. She doesn't remember anything. And she's like, I don't know how how you remember this stuff. Um, but people all the time say that to me. They're like, oh my God, how do you remember the, like, the smallest details about something that happened to you when you were like six years old? I'm like, I don't know. But, um, but I've never heard that. But I, I did tell this person I said, but I have a very specific kind of epilepsy. I have juvenile myoclonic epilepsy. Juvenile means it's petite seizures is what I had when I got diagnosed. The kind, of di the kind of epilepsy that I have is called juvenile myoclonic epilepsy. And so it's a very specific kind of epilepsy. So I don't know. Maybe other kinds of epilepsy cause memory loss. The kind that I have, I've never been told that by a doctor. So I don't know. Um, but it is weird, like, the things that I remember. I think I kind of, like, fixate on certain things. 
It's probably one of my many, many diagnoses I've never been diagnosed with before. I mean, I fixate on the smallest details of things, you know? And um, so anyway, but these books, Witch's Sister, somebody, when I was talking about it years ago, said, did you not know that there's like a whole series past that? I was like, what? And so like I looked online and there's like seven or eight books in the series. I ended up buying them all like on thrift books. They're all like used, like library books and stuff like that. I ended up buying them all. So I have all of them. They're only like 150 pages and they're like kids books, right? And so every summer I tell myself I'm going to read them. And I never do. So those two I want to read. But anyway, so last night I like I got online and I ordered like a hundred dollars worth of books. I was so excited and I and I ordered a Russell Banks book that was um I think I ordered two Russell Banks books. He has a new one coming out. It came out today, I think. So these books should come tomorrow and Wednesday. Um but I ordered his newest one. I can't remember what it's called. Mm. It's called Trailer Park. And see, this is where his stuff is so bizarre. And, um, cause everything is totally different. Every book is completely different. And it's about three different sets of people that live in this trailer park in upstate New York. And like what happens to them. It's supposed to be very good. And then I noticed that Jill McCorkle just had a book of short stories that came out. And I can't remember what it's called. I can see the cover in my head. But I ordered that too. And I bought both of those hardback, which I don't usually ever read hardbacks, but I wanted them because they just came out. So I bought those as well. They were expensive. They were like $25. But I was like, I'm going to treat myself to some books. So I think tonight I'm going to get online and I'm going to order some Shirley Jackson, some Flannery O'Connor, because I want to read all the Southern literature. I used to love that back in the day. Oh, but what's so funny was, so my mother loved Carson McCullers. Like, she would always talk about the book, uh, Member of the Wedding, if you guys have never read that book. It's about a little girl and her brother's getting married. And she, like, wants to, she thinks, like, okay, anyway, she's getting married, too, kind of thing, you know? And she's, like, just part of all of it. It's a very sweet book. It's kind of, like, to me, next to To Kill Mockingbird, probably one of the sweetest book stories I've ever read. But very kind of, like, sad and melancholy, too, about, like, growing up. And my mom loved that book. But my mom also loved Heart is a Lonely Hunter, which they made into a movie, and Battle of the Sad Cafe. Well, I don't think I had ever read Battle, Battle, Battle of the Sad Cafe, and I don't think I've ever read... Um, you know what I also need to look and see is, is Benjamin Allier signs if he has written any new books. And then, anyway, I don't think I've ever read Heart is a Lonely Hunter and I don't think I've ever read Battle of Sad Cafe. So I bought Heart is a Lonely Hunter. I mean, these books were so cheap, you guys, like $4, which for me is cheap for paperbacks. I don't think that you can get a cheap paperback that cheap. They were on sale last night on Prime or I don't know if it's Prime Day or whatever. <laughs> I guess I could look because all the YouTubers will be doing their Amazon Prime videos today. But anyway, um, and then I bought, it's Member of the Wedding, Ballad of the Sad Cafe, which I guess they consider them novellas, and then a bunch of his short stories, or, or start short stories. So I'm really excited about that. And then who is the other one I bought? Oh, Cormac McCarthy, because, which wasn't like of that era, but I loved The Road. They made it into a movie and... The book is like a hundred times better. I can remember reading that. It was like this thick paperback. And I can remember reading it. It was so fantastic. It's kind of like, it's not zombies. It's apocalypse, apocalyptic. So I bought this other book by Cormac McCarthy that I'd never heard of before. That was kind of apocalyptic too. It was about a brother and a sister. And so I got that one. I got like eight or nine books. I was real excited. So I'm gonna get on tonight and get some more. Hey, how are you? I'm gonna get some more books. And, uh, so yeah, I was real excited about that last night. And then I started watching this documentary and, oh, uh, well, Nikki told me about this show to watch called Suburban Screams. We both got real scared thinking it was going to be terrifying. It was by John Carpenter, you know, that did Halloween. And it's like, each episode is different and it's about, like, scary stories but that are true like the first one takes place in canada and uh, why does all the scary stuff happen in canada i feel like all these documentaries and stuff i've been watching lately take place in canada but anyway the first story is about this these people in canada and they were like in their early 20s and they're doing the ouija board <laughs> they made like a ouija board up with a pizza box and then they conjured the spirit of this girl named kelly the first episode is called just kelly <laughs> kelly Whenever I th say just, like, just Kelly or just Peter or something like that, I always think of just Joan. Did you guys ever watch the Romancing the Stone movies? I love that. And then the second one called Jewel of the Nile, uh, Kathleen Turner's got the guy following around, and her name's Joan, and he calls her just Joan. And he's always, like, he'll just say, just Joan. He just, like, it's just her, her whole name. 
because she's like, he, he calls her something and she goes, no, it's just Joan. And he goes, oh, okay, just Joan. And he calls her, I don't know why I remember that. But anyway, you know what other movie I just thought about while I was thinking about this that I love is, um, is it called Quick Change with Gina Davis? That one guy that's real hilarious that was in those vacation movies and they rob a bank. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? I love that movie so much. I've been watching that in forever. I need to start watching some more movies. But anyway, um, what's that movie called? Was it called Quick Change? But the reason I was thinking Benjamin and I earlier signs was because he wrote, um, last, or he, Last Night Sang to the Monster, which is probably my favorite book of his, but he wrote uh, Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe. And just the other night, it came up recommended to me somewhere, or like I was looking through something, and I was like, oh, I still haven't even seen the movie of this. I loved that book. I thought that book was so beautifully written. And, um, and I've never, like, I've never seen the movie. And so, the movie was like, kind of like, eh, people said it wasn't that great. So I haven't watched it yet. So I'm gonna watch that movie probably this week. Um, but Benjamin and I Lear signs, I never, whenever I say that to Alex, he always like, just, he's like, you're not pronouncing it correctly. I know, I know, but anyway. He wrote, like, everybody knows him for, like, his young adult book, Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe, but really, like, I love his adult fiction more. Uh, last night I sang The Monster was about, like, an 18 or 19 year old <clears throat> that goes to a treatment facility for hair. I think he's a heroin addict. And he becomes, he's roommates and becomes good friends with this guy that's, like, 50. And they become best friends. And it's about him in this treatment facility. I can remember them all, like, standing outside in the snow, like, around this, like, old coffee can smoking cigarettes. I don't know why I remember that scene in the movie, but that, that book is probably one of the best books about addiction, fiction books about addiction that I've ever read in my entire life. And then Juliana, Jesus and Juliana go to Hollywood. I loved that book. Um, what was the other book? Do you guys hear this candle over here? I love the sound of a candle. And then, um, the one book of his that I haven't read, I think I've read almost all of his books except for Last Night at the Kentucky Club or something like that. I have it inside, I should pull it down. I need to go through my bookcases and like the books I'm never gonna read, I need to donate and get rid of and then keep the books I'm gonna read and put them up there. I need to go through all my bookshelves. Um, and I need to get rid of the books that are in our basement. So, organizing stuff slowly still in the basement. People think because I don't mention something, I'm not doing it. I'm still working on the basement regularly. <laughs> regularly trust um so yeah so i need to look and see if he has a new book out because i love him but he did a follow-up book well there was aristotle and dante discover the secrets of the universe and then there was a sequel to it which i think i liked but in between there there was a book and it was about like three friends that were teenagers i didn't like that book at all i didn't think that book was good i it felt like he needed to put something out but i'll tell you what's interesting is years ago, I think this was maybe before I started on booktube or maybe when I started on booktube, I was thinking about writing, you know, Jill McCorkle. I think I had told that story in like a video or something like that. And so when I read Discover, and I read uh, Aristotle to Dante, Discover the Secrets in the Universe, and then I ended up reading um, Last Night I Sang to the Monster. Last Night I Sang to the Monster so spoke to me because it was such a true story about addiction and friendship and recovery. It was really more about friendship and recovery because it was about these people that, all these people that meet in this treatment facility and like some they didn't get along with and things like that. It was like, I mean, it was such a perfect depiction of what treatment was like. And I remember I, I think he like at the time was a professor at the University of Texas Austin or something like that. And I like found on his website and I like emailed him and I thought, this is such a shot in the dark. Like he's never gonna ever see this email, right? And he emailed me back. And we like had several emails back and forth. And I was like telling him like how like that book like really impacted me and I loved his book on addiction. And he was asking me some questions as a person in recovery about like my point of view of reading the book. And he was so nice. He was like the nicest guy in the entire world. I mean, I probably have like 10 emails back and forth with him. Um, through the years, through the years. But anyway, um, so yeah, was a really nice guy. I find that most writers that I've talked to, I mean, writers that write for like a career, right? Or poets are very like quiet people, like mostly loners, the ones that I've interacted with that are very humble about their craft, especially like the more talented they are, the more humble they are. 
I know that there's like this painted picture of like a lot of these people like Hemingway and stuff that were arrogant. Maybe they are. I haven't met, I mean, I've obviously never met Ernest Hemingway even though people tell me that I look like him. <laughs> I have this one picture on the beach where I'm like sideways and it's black and white. People like are like, oh my God, you look exactly like Ernest Hemingway. My mom would love that. Um, she would think that was so funny that people thought that I looked like Ernest Hemingway. But anyway, so yeah, so I bought a bunch of these books last night. I'm really excited about them coming. I'm really excited about um, just like reading some new stuff while I'm sitting out here drinking coffee. The camera stopped. I didn't even realize I was at a half an hour. Anyway, I rem sitting out here drinking coffee and reading books. But I remember my friend and I, we went to go visit her sister in London. So my friend's sister, she actually went to Purdue University and she was an art major. And she ended up on, she painted cells, I mean animation's done completely different today, but when I was like, so I got sober in 94, so this probably would have been like 91 or 92. She was painting cells, which I guess is what you do in animation back then, for this movie called The Thief in the Baghdad. And um, with, uh, what's his name? The guy that was in like all the scary movies way back in the day. Well, I can't think of his name. But anyway, she painted cells for that. And so she lived in London. And their dad is from Scotland. And so my friend and I, we went to go visit her over New Year's. And I remember when we went to her flat. And um, their flat was, she shared it with like four other people. And it was like you walked in and there was like a real small living room with a fireplace to the right. And you walked up like, and then to the back behind that was like the kitchen and then you walked up a flight of stairs and it was like bathroom bathroom small bathroom bedroom and then bathroom bed and like each floor was bathroom bedroom and when we walked into her bedroom she was like an avid reader and i was too at that time and my friend was as well and she had all these books like her entire like one side of her wall was just like stacks of books like 10 books eight books six books like just stacked in a row that she had read and they were all dog-eared and stuff i don't know why i still remember that but i like loved how that looked and so i was like last night i was like i am so excited about getting some of these but i haven't gotten that excited about books in a long time so i'm real excited about that i just felt like last night i was like watching these shows and I was like drinking coffee and taking Boo Radley outside and it was so beautiful outside and like the weather just really does do something different to me it makes me feel so good and I just was like you know after like this moment that I have this weekend I just felt so content and so happy like I was allowing myself to be happy you know like I always feel like I like there's some barrier or obstacle there that I put in between and I just was like I just feel so blessed I feel so happy right now so yeah, so last night I was, um, <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> so last night I, um, oh, so Nikki and I were going to watch this, sh this show called Suburban Screams. I got like 10 minutes into it and I texted her and I said, are you still watching the show? And she was like, I'm on the second episode. I thought it would get better, but it doesn't. She's like, I have it on the background while I'm doing other stuff. She's just like Tanya. She watches all these shows and has them on the background while she's doing other stuff like cleaning the house and cooking for kids and stuff like that and um so I got about halfway through the show and this guy wakes up in a nightmare and this girl that's like drowned in this river she's like hanging over him and he's soaking I was like I can't I don't like reenactment shows first of all like I mean I like 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 fictionalized drama like when they turn the staircase of documentary into a show that I like I don't like when it's like a reenactment you know and they're like yeah and then we did the Ouija board and they show these actors doing the Ouija board I don't love all that you know it was corny has anybody watched it? Does it get any better? I was done. And then I was like, okay, I need to watch something. So I was like looking at these documentaries and I had seen that like last week or the week before on the top 10 list was this documentary about this couple. And it was like couple, somebody gets, this couple gets killed in this house in the 80s. And I was like, but now I'm real into that stuff, see? And so I was, I literally went through like every list on Netflix. I was like, I know I just saw this. And it was on like the new and hot thing, which does anybody know where you can find that on your, like when you're on the app on your iPad? Like it doesn't show up the new and hot on my iPad. On my phone, it shows it up. Like it's like the middle thing, right? But I couldn't see it on my iPad. So I had to get on my phone and then I got on my phone. And it's called... Soaring versus, okay, it's called Till Till Murder Do Us Part. Soaring versus Haysom. Oh my God, you guys, this documentary is so good. I have an episode and a half. To, to, last night I was like, you need to go to bed. You need to save something this good for tomorrow night. So I, um, so I saved it for tonight. But anyway, did you get anything good? My neighbor's getting his mail. 
Did you golf today? Oh yeah. Was it the first day? Second. Played last Monday too. Where'd you golf? I just play over here at Songs. Yeah. My cousin Caroline and I, when we drove by there last week, we saw tons of people there. Oh yeah, it's, they say they've been packed for a couple weeks. Yeah, I don't think that pool's gonna ever open again. Probably not. That pool's sad looking. <laughs> yeah. I am working right now, yeah. <laughs> I'm making a video, but you look very golfy in your outfit. I think you forgot you're not a t uh, you're not a tennis coach anymore. Well, <clears throat> I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> it's been about 10, 15 minutes. My neighbor came up here. We were talking, and he was telling me all kinds of stuff. He told me about his golf game today, and the son came out on the fourth hole, and then he was telling me about how he's been sick, and... Um, was telling me all about that. Everybody in my neighborhood has been sick lately and stuff. So, hey. And um, everybody's been, my, my neighbor, she was sick. He said he was sick, but I asked him if his wife was sick and he said no. And so everybody in the neighbor has been sick. Well, I don't think my neighbors across the street have been sick. Um, so anyway, yeah, I, was talk I think I was talking about this documentary. I remember restarting it and telling you guys the title of it. So it was called Till because I rewound it to look at the title on like the second episode, because I was like, is it called Till Death Do Us Part? And I think it's called Till Murder Do Us Part, and it's Till, T-I-L-L, -L, which I thought was weird that they didn't just put Till, T-I-L. So small things I noticed like that. It's called Till Murder Do Us Part, Soaring versus Hasem. I never heard of this case before. This is what I love. I love to watch a true crime documentary that I've never heard of before. Actually, Tanya told me that that Chowchilla or whatever that documentary she was like this you need to watch it she was like it is it's like an important documentary it's really good and I was like okay I'll watch that um, and Murder Mountain came up last night people have been telling me that's that Humboldt County thing that I was talking about the other night but anyway so I started watching this documentary it's about this girl named Elizabeth Haysom I think that's her name and in like 1985 she was going to the University of Virginia and she came from a real wealthy family. And her dad was like the president of some huge company or something like that. Her parents were like probably in their 60s. And um, she had gone to boarding schools in like England and Switzerland. It's interesting because she has an English accent. But she grew up in the United States, but she went to English and Swiss boarding schools. Does that happen? That you, I, That was interesting to me that she had an English accent. <laughs> Um, but anyway, so, and then at one point she was at like a boarding school and she took off with a friend. They just say that she took off with a lesbian. <laughs> That's what they say. They're like, <laughs> I'm like sitting there like watching it like this, like drinking my coffee. I'm like, well, I had a hot coffee, but I'm like, she took off with a lesbian. They were shooting heroin in Paris. What? Apparently her and this lesbian friend of hers. <laughs> She also said she was a lesbian or something at one point. I don't know. And that it was, it gets so weird. They said she had, said she had a relationship with her, her mom. It's just, it's the most bizarre thing you've ever seen. And so, anyway, so she took off from this boarding school and she and her friend were on the road or like on the run in Europe, like traveled all through Europe for like a year and a half when she was like a teenager. And so then her parents put her in school in the United States. She finished there. She must have been like, super apparently she's the judge at one point said that she was smarter than he was and um but i mean like these people are brilliant they're like called like eccle scholars at the university of virginia i'd never heard of an eccle scholar he was like a, called like a william scholar or something like that he had like two of these like you know like road scholars like they were that they were like these scholarships this so she meets so she's like real edgy gorgeous she's like this real edgy short haircut looks very like what you'd imagine Europe in the late, in the mid to late 80s to be, right? And kind of like punk rock a little bit. Smoke cigarette to University of Virginia. Nobody smoked cigarettes, is what they said. <laughs> I thought everybody smoked cigarettes in the 80s. <laughs> she smoked merits. Oh my God, that totally took me back. When she was like, they were talking about her smoking merits. I was like, I think I smoked merits for a while. <laughs> I don't know why I remember that. <laughs> I do remember that my mom smoked because I used to steal them from her back in the day. She smoked Kent's, which the other day, I was like looking through strange facts about stuff, and it said that at one point, 
kits. I thought this was so strange. I don't know what the, they, their filters were made from asbestos because it was supposed to give you cleaner air or something like, is that not so weird? The things we used to think back in the day. But my mom forever smoked Vantage with the, with the holes and cause I can remember when I would steal them from her and I'd be like, God, I hate that she smoked. She went back to the, I would all, I, this is so weird that I would think this at like 14, but I would think I cannot, I'm so pissed that she went back to these Vantage. My aunt and uncle, they stopped smoking at some point, but they smoked. I was telling Caroline this the other day, it was a red pack. It was like, they were smoked 100s and it was called Lois Tar. It was a red and white pack, like the top of it was white and the rest of the pack was red. They don't, I don't think they make them anymore. Carlton's, Carlton's, that's what they were called. My aunt and uncle smoked those forever. And um, they didn't really, my aunt and uncle never really smoked that much. Like they would like, you know, especially my uncle. He quit smoking, I can remember like 30 years later, I was like, Uncle Dave, do you ever miss like smoking? He's like, every day. I was like, do you really? You never even smoke that much. He's like, every day I think about it. I was like, are you kidding me? He's like, every single day I think about it. How nice it would be to have a cigarette. My aunt would every once in a while she would have a cigarette. Like she quit. I mean, she was a more regular smoker than my uncle was. She would have a cigarette every once in a while. I remember like at my mom's funeral, she and her friend came out in the garage and we're like, we're having our funeral cigarette and whatever. But she, I mean, neither one of them. My uncle stopped, stopped. She, my aunt would smoke a cigarette every once in a blue moon, but not, not very often. I would say the last 10 years of her life. Um, but my mom, before she passed away, my mom would go and she would like buy, um, she would go and buy a pack of cigarettes. She would, okay. I don't even remember what the brand is. If I sat here for a second, I could probably think about it. She smoked this brand of cigarettes that they like only sold at like two gas stations and they were like generic cigarettes and they were so cheap. My mom would buy a pack and she would write on the pack the date that she bought it and she would like see if she could make the pack last as long as she did. I can remember like when we would like, I would take her out of town and go to the casino or something like that. And we would go to the gas station and get fountain pops and whatever. I'd be like, what kind of cigarettes do you want? And she'd always say this one brand. I'd be like, no, like if you're gonna smoke, like let me get you something that you want, you know? And she'd be always like, she'd always be like, I'm not letting my son buy me cigarettes. And I'd borrow, buy her like a pack of like Marble Lights or something like that, you know? And she'd always be like, I can't believe I'm letting my son buy me a pack of cigarettes. I'm like, mom, I do not, like, you smoke those cigarettes that are like so harsh and whatever. And, um, what were they called? Why can't I, I don't even remember what they're called? I feel like they start with an M. Like she, like sometimes like if I came over here for coffee and stuff, like I'd say like, I'm stopping the gas station. Do you want me to get you anything? And she'd be like, can you get me a pack of, and whatever they were, like I'd ask for them. And they, people would look at me like they had never even heard of these cigarettes before. But anyway, um, so she was smoking merits in the show. So anyway, it's a show about this woman and her name is Elizabeth Haysom, and her parents were super wealthy, and she had half, two half-brothers. And so she meets this guy at the University of Virginia. So they all live in this dorm together, because they're all these, I think they're called Eccles Scholars, and they're super, super brilliant people, right? And so she meets this guy, like, the first night they move in at this dinner, and his name is, he's from Germany, I'm gonna mispronounce his name. His name is Jens, it's like J-E-N-S, it's like Jens. I can't remember his last name is, I just said it at the beginning of this video, because it's that sharing sharing it starts with that soaring soaring yen soaring and his father they, he's from atlanta georgia and his father's like a german diplomat so anyway her parents get murdered like butchered slaughtered murdered i mean it's horrific and um i mean the pictures that they show i was really surprised because usually in a lot of these documentaries like they don't show a lot of pictures i mean they show like the bodies so trigger warning if you if that kind of stuff bothers you don't watch this documentary they show like the bodies on the floor the smeared blood i mean it's everything and um i mean not like up close and graphic but they show enough that it's like crime scene photos you know and um so then it becomes this whole thing. Then they, then they go on the run and they're like in Thailand and here and there and they're like so in love. They have like this obsessive love for each other. And then it's like these dueling court cases. And I have to be honest with you, I am not somebody that loves to watch true crime that's a lot about court cases, but this one I was so intrigued with because this um, prosecutor, his name is Jim, Jim, Jim Hicks or Jim Hale or something like that. He is so good. He is so good. Like she wrote these letters and like she pleads guilty and says that she was part of this murder and whatever, right? You, I don't want to ruin it for you what part she was in. But anyway, 
But then she tries to blame the whole thing on him, and this attorney, or this prosecutor, she signs these letters, Lady Macbeth. And so he goes in, and he's like, isn't Lady Macbeth from, like, Shakespeare, who is the one that wants all these people dead, and she's like, yeah. She's so arrogant on the stand, but, like, tries to act real, like, you know, like, sad and empathetic and stuff. Her brother gets up there, and he's like, I don't believe her at all. Like, she's a liar. She'd lie right to your face. It is so, it is so good. And they have him on there because it, the whole thing starts because it's them getting out of jail after 30 years. So that's how the whole thing starts. And so he goes back to Germany. So he's interviewed throughout the whole thing, like, today. He's, like, my age. Well, he was born in 66, so I was born in 72. So he's like, what is that, for six years older than me? He's six years older than me. He's interviewed through the whole thing. I keep on thinking that they're going to, like, show an empty chair and she's going to be interviewed, but I don't know if she is or not. But this is, this is so good, you guys. It's really, really good. The other documentary that's on Netflix right now that's trending or it's on the top ten is called, like, Conspiracy. It's not like a political a true crime documentary. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? It's like third or fourth. I watched a trailer, and I have to be honest with you, it's called something Octopus. I was so confused watching the trailer. I was like, if I'm confused watching the trailer, I don't know that I can actually watch the documentary. Like, the political documentaries kind of confuse me, but it's about this group of people that's like controlling things or something. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? It's called like Conspiracy Octopus or something like that. It's on the top 10 of Netflix. If you guys have seen it and it's good, put it in the comment section below and I'll watch it. But I don't know anything about it, so I don't know if it's good or not. But anyway, yeah, I watched it last night. I will say as far as Suburban Screams, which a scale of 1 to 10, I would probably give a negative 1. But it did kind of scare me a little bit to watch it when they were doing the Ouija board with, you know. This one girl's like, I got the beer. The other girl's like, I got the pizza. And I'm like, who's got the Ouija board? The, and they, it's so funny because they have this whole conversation and the guy's like... Well, I can make, she's like, I, what about the pointer? And he goes, it's not called a pointer. And I'm like, out loud, like with my AirPods on and Alex and Boo asleep upstairs, I go, it's a planchette. And he goes, it's a planchette. <laughs> I'm like, this is the worst show. Why am I watching this show, you know? So anyway, and then I went to bed last night. And then, of course, as soon as I go to bed, Boo Radley wants to go outside. And go, so got him all settled and all that kind of stuff. Took him out. I think I took him outside and... I don't remember if I gave him treats or if he just ran back upstairs last night. But anyway, I got him settled, and then I got into bed, and I just, yeah. So, and now it's today, and it's beautiful outside. And I was going to film a Peterism's video after this vlog, but I don't think that I'm going to now. I think I'm just going to, uh, I think I'm going to read a couple Raymond Carver short stories out here. And then I'm going to take my walk, see what Alex is going to do. Um, he seemed kind of tired when he came in, so he maybe like wanted to like take a nap or rest or whatever. Or see if he's hungry, if he wants to get something to, food with what he's gonna eat, if he wants to get something or whatever. I'm not doing horrible this week in my way. I'm kind of surprised. Like I'm doing okay. I'm not doing great. Um, I'd say on a scale of one to ten, this is like a five or a six week for me. But I am walking again, which is good, and I'm excited about. Um, I'm not eating horribly, but I'm not eating great. So, um, yeah. I was kind of surprised when I got on the scales today. I mean, it's not like I've lost any weight or anything like that, but I haven't, like, gained tons of weight either, so I was kind of surprised. I will say the weekends are tough for me, but... Yeah. I need to get a pedicure so bad. I kind of don't want to get a pedicure, though, until... Well, I trimmed my nails. My nails are really, really short. But I, uh... I kind of don't want to get a pedicure until closer to when we go to Florida. Because I was like, maybe if Tony and I go to a meeting, then we can go to a, get a pedicure afterwards. She's always down to get a pedicure. Or get her nails done or something like that. So yeah, the greenery's coming back. The grass is over here. I don't know if you guys can see this. The, the crab grass is coming up. Do you see? How is it so quick? It's coming back. I'm ready for it, though. I mean, it's nice. Usually by the time that I get done vlogging. So when did I start this? I started this at like, it was like 10 till 5 or something like that. It was right before 5. And it wasn't right before 5. But it was a little bit before 5. And then... I don't even know how long I vlogged. 30 minutes plus at least like uh, 14 minutes, so about 45 minutes. So put me at about 5.30, 5.45, and then I talked to my neighbor, so it's gotta be close to like six. And usually by now I'm getting cold outside. I'm not getting cold outside, I can totally, I'm totally comfortable in this t-shirt. Um, 
Yeah. So, tonight, reading, eat a good meal, maybe take a little nap with the windows open. Although the outside the allergies like really affect Alex badly, but I don't think the allergies are that bad yet. So we can maybe like have the windows open and get some air in the bedroom and stuff. And in the house, I already thought about that. Like tonight when I'm watching shows, I'm gonna open the, the back window, back door, so I can have like air coming in and stuff like that. So tonight I'm gonna finish that documentary. I don't know that tonight The Bachelor's on TV. With tonight's episode, I have three episodes to catch up on. That's four and a half, four and a half hours of The Bachelor. I'll be honest with you, I don't know that I really care. But I also don't wanna just like watch this week's episode, like the hometowns. Like I wanna go back and see what like gets them to this point. Um, an hour and a half for a show is really long. But I feel like I've already like made it halfway through the season, I need to watch it. If tonight I watch one episode, and then tomorrow or Wednesday I watch another episode, and then Thursday or Friday I watch another episode, then I could be caught up this week, and then I could watch the finale with everybody else. So that's probably what I'll do. He, it looks like he gets left at the altar. That's what the trailer looks like. He proposes to somebody to give him the res, his final res and they don't want him. <laughs> why do I care? Why, that's the question is why do I even care? Gosh. But anyway, so yeah, I'm gonna go see what Boo and Alex are up to and um, just have a relaxing night. Find another true crime documentary to watch tonight. Um, if the weather's nice again tomorrow, I like today I almost was like, I'm not filming any videos, I'm just gonna sit out here and read all day long. But then I was like, eh, you can, you can do that tonight. You can do that tonight and film some videos. So, I don't know, I'm just gonna kinda play it by ear. I'm so ready. We're talking about the pool being open. He's like, we've still got a long time left. I'm like, we have literally like two and a half months. We do not have a long time left. It's, it's in sight. <laughs> the pool opening is in sight. But it's not even just about the pool opening for me. It's like, the month and a half before that, I'm just like being out here and enjoying it and all this kind of stuff. I can't believe I'm almost coming up on a year of being in the hospital for pancreatitis. Like, I was thinking about that last night. I was like, you know, after the accident, which was two years ago, I took three months off and didn't film. And then last year after pancreatitis, I took a month off and I didn't film. And in some kind of way, I thought it was like, it was kind of like healthy for me to like take an extended period of time off, you know? Where I just got up and I knew I wasn't filming that day. But the thing is, is like, I don't want to take any extended period of time off. Like I don't feel like that. And then I feel weird. Like if I take a day or two off, but I think I'm instead of just like maybe this year, instead of taking like an entire month off, like I've been forced to do the last two, well, you know, was forced to at the pancreatitis and after the accident and I took three months off and all that kind of stuff healing and whatever, you know, instead of that, I think just taking like a day or two off here and there and whatever, it's probably what I'm gonna do and just if it's nice and I'm relaxed and enjoying my day, do that. It's probably what I'll do. I think people were kind of surprised that I vlogged yesterday on Sunday because a lot of people were like, thank you so much for vlogging today. I mean, if we get back from brunch early and Alex is just like laying down and stuff like that, there's no reason for me not to vlog, especially if it's nice out here. Like now that it's nice out here and I can film some videos at night and whatever, like, and then like, cause that's my plan this summer. Like, you know, if I film a video for like, let's say, you know, 20 to 40 minutes out here. And then let's say I film a Peterisms video. That's two videos that I have going into the next day. And then I can get up and I can film like a review video and a Peter Does Stuff video. And that's four videos. And then I can go to the pool all day long and come home and film my vlog while I'm like drying off or whatever. Oh my God, look at this little dog, it's so cute. He's like. <laughs> You know, and then I can come home and film my vlog. I mean, what a perfect day is that, you know? And if I do that four or five times a week, and then, of course, there's not, not every day is going to be beautiful weather, so there's going to be some days where it's, like, rainy or cloudy or outside or colder and I don't go to the pool, and those will be days that I film more inside, you know, and then just take some days off where I don't film anything at all, you know? I'm really excited about this spring and summer. I'm really excited about, you know, I learned, it was funny because it wasn't, if you guys remember, it wasn't until, like, middle to late last summer that I started filming out here in that chair late at night. And so now that I can do that, you know, um, plus the days are going to get longer. Like, you know, I've had... Oh, there's my neighbor dog. I've been like filming vlogs 
like at between five and six because it starts getting dark. But as it starts getting light longer out, you know, in the spring and summer, then I'll be able to film longer out and things like that. So I'm really excited about this spring and summer. I'm really excited about all these activities and stuff like that. Um, I am not really sure creatively what I am doing with the sobriety Christmas book that I want to turn into a movie and then the cozy mystery. I may be back shelfing or back burn putting on the back burner the Christmas movie and the sobriety thing because my plan was to write it when it was cold outside but it really we never really got that kind of weather. So I think like for me to be in more of the Christmas spirit it might be I listen Okay, this is where I'm at, and I made this video over there on, t on my drama channel today. I don't really care what people think anymore. I'm going to do what makes me happy. And so, I know I'm going to get criticism, and people are going to be like, he said he's coming out this movie, and I'm Okay, so it didn't happen this year. Maybe it'll happen next year. Maybe it'll happen the year after that. Whatever. It's, <laughs> it's my life, and it's my creative journey, you know? But I, if I'm going to write that book, I want to do it like when I'm in the Christmas mood. I think, like, that would probably be better, or like a wintry mood. I don't want to write it in the middle of spring when it's 70 degrees outside. And I came up with this idea for this book, and I have been outlining it greatly. And I had already started the, so I have a good start to the, the sober story. I have like a good start to that, that I'm just gonna like kind of shelf for right now. And then the cozy mystery, I have a good start to that. The cozy mystery is something that I can continue to write, but I have another idea and it's, it kind of started off as an idea for a cozy mystery, but it really turned into kind of a thriller. And I've always wanted to write a thriller, and before I really put pen to paper, so to speak, and really start it, I'm always, look, for the last 50 years of my life, I've always been writing a book. So even if I never put out another book or publish another book, I'll always be talking about writing a book, you know? But um, I came up with this idea for a thriller. It kind of started as a point of a, from a cozy mystery point of view. And then I went in and I was like, I've always wanted to write a thriller. And to be honest with you, I didn't think I was smart enough to put together like the fine details of it. And so every night I got this outline in my phone, I add a little bit to it. And I'm really thinking through like the mystery of it all, of how I want it to be like really tightly wound and unique and whatever and, and mysterious and a thriller, right? That's different than anything that I've read before that's unique to me. But I don't want to just like sit down and say, I'm going to write a thriller, so here's a thriller. Like, I don't want to sit down and write it and put pen to paper, like I said, until I really know what I'm doing with it. So that's kind of where my mind is at. Like, if I'm going to write a book, that's what I want to focus on right now. But I don't know. We'll see. I definitely want to put out the sobriety Christmas thing, and I definitely want to make it into a movie. I just don't know how or when that's going to happen. It's not going to be like a difficult, that's not a difficult book to write. It's a short, it's going to be very short. Um, I actually even thought, to be honest with you, I know this is going to sound kind of crazy, but you know, like, um, hey, I actually thought, um, about like maybe next, like late fall. I can't remember what I read. Oh, I also bought Naked Lunch last night by William S. Burroughs because they were talking about it on the Truman Capote show that we're watching. I was like, I saw the movie years ago and it was so weird, but I don't, I think it was about this gay guy that goes to Tangier. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Naked Lunch by William S. Burroughs who was like, you know. Anyways, really bizarre book. Oh, because I went and I looked at a lot of cult novels, cult books. I bought, oh, that was the other book I bought. I bought Bukowski. I don't think I've ever read a Bukowski book before. I think I started one, but I bought Ham and Rye or Ham and Swiss or something like that. But I bought some Bukowski book that's like a cult novel. And then I bought Naked Lunch, and I bought another one. And I have House of Leaves in the basement that I bought years ago, and I haven't bought. I need to go through the basement and look at some books and pull some books out. Because um, those are the books that I'm not giving away, so I need to pull some of those books out. But anyway, I um, I had read something, and it was somebody had sat down, some book I read, and I was like, how did it come to fruition? And they, like, went, and they, like, went and stayed in some house for a week, and they literally wrote it in a week or a weekend or something like that. And I thought, you know, I could, like, take, like, three days, and I could go somewhere. Like, Alex has no desire to go to, like, Vermont or someplace like that where it's, like, you're in a snowy cabin or, like, you know, Colorado. Like, that's just not his dream vacation. But I thought... I could go by myself 
and I could go to like a cabin and you know just get a bunch of comfort food and whatever and I could just write the book like in one weekend and I would like love doing that like that would be like I need to have more experiences where I just like step fully into the like I, like that always sounds to me like this dream experience you know you get this like Airbnb cabin in the woods somewhere where it's all snowy and stuff like that like in Vermont or Colorado or something like that right or Montana and then you like stay there for the weekend or Wyoming maybe I'll run into Jeffree Star you know but anyway you stay there you know for the weekend and then and like I could just get up when I wanted to and write when I wanted to and whatever I just you know and stay there for three or four days I think that would be really really fun and I know Alex would be really encouraging of that too I don't know that I'll do that, but maybe I will because I do want to put that book out there. It's really important for me to put that out there and the message that I want to have with that book. Um, I got to figure out the movie a little bit more and how I want to do that movie. Um, the thing is, I really like. I really want Carlitos and Liliana. Did I even tell you? I asked them to be in the movie. I really want them to be in the movie, but. I mean, he's 11 now, whether he's 11, 12, or 13 won't change him being in the movie. Like, it could be in the next couple years. I, it's not like it has to be this year, you know what I mean? And, uh, so yeah. I'm always an ideas guy. I think it's one of the things that keeps me going. Somebody said on a video of mine, like on a vlog, they said, Peter, you're saying you're going to do things and you never doing them is triggering to me. And I was like, it's triggering to you? <laughs> it's triggering to you how? How is that triggering to you? When I say things like, I'm going to take a walk and I don't take a walk. How, what, is that, what does that trigger for you? <laughs> I thought that was kind of a strange comment. But that's like always who I always have been. You know, but this is the thing. Whereas some people that I know don't have any ideas. I have 10 ideas and might accomplish three. You know what I mean? And um, I'm always dreaming. I'm always doing something. And if I don't, they were fun ideas to think about while I thought about them, you know? It's such a beautiful night. Trees are starting to bud a little bit. I feel like I've sat out here and looked at these trees with no leaves for so long. It's going to be so weird when they start growing again, but I'm ready for it. Oh my God. Batteries at the half mark, halfway mark is about to die. And I'm at 27 minutes. This is crazy. I got to get off here. All right. I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Monday. Is it Monday or is it Tuesday? It's Monday. Magically amazing Monday and a fantastic, I always say weekend, but fantastic beginning to your week. And if nobody else has told you this today... I love you. And you know what? Do something today that makes you happy. Do a little self-care. Also, treat people with kindness. Treat yourself with kindness. Love yourself a little bit more. Put some love out there in the world. Love one another, you know? Uh, I saw this quote somebody put out, and they said, you would think with the fact that we only have one life, and we all know that, that we w wouldn't be fighting each other, that we'd be loving each other a little bit more and understanding each other a little bit more. Let's love each other a little bit more today. I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching on the front porch. It's spring. It's spring in Indianapolis, and I love it. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Love you.